are open to expand your professional horizon, this might be the right call to be in, basically. And also, you know, if you are somebody who is nicely settled in your current role, but you just want to look around a little bit to see what is outside on the job market, then uh, I think it's a good quick overview for you uh, to know what is the current situation, let's say, on the job market. Of course, if you are at risk of losing your job, you don't want to be unprepared or you are just curious to see how currently the job search works, then this will be a good occasion for you to learn a little bit more about the details. And um, by attending this webinar, hopefully you will learn uh, in a quick way in how to prepare your CV. Uh, in a way that you can increase your success rate when you are looking for a new job opportunity. Uh, we will show you a couple of tricks uh, on how to adapt and apply the new methods that uh, are utilized on the current job market. You will achieve um, some great results if you want to optimize your job search. And um, we will also give you a couple of tips on how you can maintain your profile attractive for the recruiters. So just uh, some words about me. I'm a uh, Hungarian origins, uh, living in Rome since 14 years now. I'm currently employed uh, by a multinational market research firm and working as a reward and recognition manager. I have 14 years approximately of experience on the HR field. I tried a couple of different areas like recruitment, HR systems implementation, compensation. I was working a lot with employee satisfaction, how to engage employees, uh, and any other recognition related activities. So my, my background is really a corporate background and uh, a couple of different areas in HR that gave me actually a very nice uh, overview on how, how companies are approaching different HR uh, specialties. So as I told you at the beginning, uh, I'm responsible for the BOLD program as the professional development director. And hopefully this will be a nice program that will provide you uh, a lot of opportunities to, to learn, to develop your skills. And uh, just an additional note that I wanted to let you know that I try to offer you free tips, uh, websites, links, and eventually suggest you to pages that you can uh, use or try, uh, but those are all free resources. And I will not uh, be utilizing anything during this workshop to sell uh, my services or offer consultancy in any way. So as I mentioned to you, I'm, I'm currently employed, so I'm not a consultant basically. Um, about your content very quickly. So um, first of all, we will be looking into the applicant tracking system. So these are systems that um, a lot of companies are utilizing. And I will tell you a little bit about how this works. This will be a little bit more technical part, but it will help you uh, to understand much better how the recruiters are approaching you when you are a candidate. We will see the CV, how the CV is structured, and I will give you a couple of tips in terms of the cover letter. We will have a very quick view uh, on the LinkedIn profile page and the, some suggestions on how to update your LinkedIn profile page. And at the end of the session, I will try to leave some time for questions and try to answer those questions. Housekeeping rules, as we mentioned at the beginning, please mute your phone lines so we don't hear any background noises, but it's working perfectly now, so thank you very much. And um, if you have questions, just post it on the chat box and Christiana will help me to try to summarize those questions at the end and make a nice summary to be able to respond quickly your questions. And I just ask you for logistics basically to keep it for the end because it might happen easily that I will be answering your questions during the session. So, um, 
you just uh, post it there and we will make a quick summary. So now with that, um, I would like to launch at the beginning a very quick poll survey. So as we mentioned, if you don't want to answer, feel free to answer. It's a bit tricky question, but if will help me a little bit to position better the content of the session today so I can tailor it uh, a little bit in a way that I can uh, respond you eventually uh, better your questions. So the first uh, polling question, what I'm just launching now is about your current work situation. I wanted to ask you, what is your situation currently? If you are happily employed, if you are currently looking, employed but looking for a new, new job opportunity, if you foresee to lose your job soon, or if you are currently unemployed. Okay, so a couple of answers are coming back. Thank you very much. We will not store, of course, your questions. We will not be able to see who answered what, so you can feel absolutely free answering questions. Okay, thank you. Thank you for those who uh, voted. So basically 64% of the participants is currently employed, 60 currently employed, uh, but looking for new professional opportunities. Approximately 25% is happily employed, what is great. And 15% uh, is currently unemployed. So thank you for answering. I'm just ending now the polling. And with that going to the uh, first area very quickly, uh, applicant tracking system. So, uh, the applicant tracking system are really, really important systems nowadays because these are systems uh, that recruiters are uh, using a lot. Are those type of recruitment softwares basically that the big companies are utilizing and uh, this is helping the recruiters to screen automatically the CVs. It is a system that scans the content of your CV. It selects it automatically based on keywords and is ranking in an order based on the match, how your CV is matching the profile of the job that the recruiter wants to have the ideal candidate for. So basically a lot of large companies are utilizing today this uh, system. And it's very, very important for us to know what this applicant tracking system means and how it is working. Um, initially, it has been created to facilitate basically the screening. So instead of the recruiters reading one by one every single application in all different formats, it's a completely automated system designed to handle mass applications. It is used nowadays in a lot of different areas and platforms. So just give you a little bit of um, flavor, what does it mean? Based on uh, a fortune research that is also visible on the JobScan job blog, 98% of the Fortune 500 companies are using the applicant tracking system. So the Fortune 500 companies are really present everywhere, all around the world. So 98% of them is using. It means basically um, systems like Taleo, Workday, uh, or any other systems developed uh, internally can be also utilized, but very popular, for example, softwares that are called Greenhouse, SAP Success Factors, or ADP. So it's good to, for you to remember a couple of names and you can just Google search it actually anytime if you just put in like applicant tracking system in Google. And it's important to recognize it. So basically how you can recognize if you need to upload your CV in an applicant tracking system is that when you click on the link, apply for the job, just an example, basically, it is guiding you through uh, to a landing page where on top of your internet browser, you will see the name of the applicant tracking system. So it will be probably www. 
Taleo or Workday.com and a lot of codes after that that are identifying the job ID that you are applying for. So it's very important for you to know that you are completing an applicant tracking system when you are sending your application. What this means for us, it means exactly that there is an algorithm in the background and this algorithm, this automatic mechanism is handling your data. It is searching for keywords. It is applying system filters automatically and it is ranking your application based on the criteria that are set in automatically in the system. What happens if we fail on this applicant tracking system application? It happens basically 75% of the cases that the job applications are rejected before even having seen by human eyes. So this is the latest Forbes statistics, basically what I wanted to share with you. You have to remember this 75% if you want to be a successful candidate because 75% of the applications get rejected if it's not matching the criteria of the applicant tracking system. What happens after that? Basically, this system is ranking, let's say, the top 10, 20 candidates. It will appear in a nicely set up way on the recruiter side. So you will be appearing as top candidate if your uh, CV is matching the criteria previously set up. So before even uh, getting in touch with a living, breathing human being, your system, the, the applicant tracking system will just scan your CV and it will handle it basically for the recruiters. So that's a little bit, you know, might be surprising, but unfortunately this is something that the candidates hate actually. So what we will be doing here is, uh, like Bob Marley said, your worst enemy could be your best friend. So, and your uh, best friend can become easily your worst enemy. What we will be doing here is just trying to make this applicant tracking system to become our best friend. So let's just start knowing these systems, what it means basically. You, you manage to have a CV. What you have to do with your CV? You have to uh, search for keywords. What it means, basically when a recruiter is publishing a job description that they are recruiting for, there are certain keywords in these job descriptions. Those are the important criteria for the job that we have to respect. So basically, you can uh, read this job description, save it all the time for you, because if you want to apply for the job, it's extremely important that you have a copy saved on your PC. Otherwise, when the job uh, announcement is expiring, you will no longer be remembering what you have applied for, especially if you are applying for a lot of uh, jobs per day. So save the job description all the time. Make sure that your CV is containing those keywords uh, regarding the vacancy description and try to make uh, your CV in a way that it contains these keywords. It is very important to personalize all the time your CV and um, your CV is possibly, you know, should be utilized for one job description and tailored a little bit to apply and to utilize for a different job description. So every time you apply for a job, it has to be reviewed. You have to do this job. Keywords of the job description, your CV. There are some tools that I will show you very quickly now. Uh, what eventually can, you can use to identify these keywords, but it will be really, really important for you to identify to keyword, these keywords and make sure that your CV is containing these, these keywords. And what you have to do with these keywords is to make sure that your skills section in your resume is really good containing 
those keywords, don't copy those over. So your skill section must contain your own skill set, but ideally it has to underline those skills that you have and that are matching the vacancy that you are applying for. Consider that I will tell you a little bit more about this point, but your skills are always transferable. What it means that it is not depending from a job. It is not depending from a company or from a sector that you are working on. If you, are, if you have excellent leadership skills, those skills will go with you everywhere. Uh, if you have language skills, if you speak Spanish, it will remain even if you leave the company. So focus on those transferable skills when you write your CV. So just going a little bit further down in those details, um, what the applicant tracking system does, it basically uh, titles for uh, it using titles for the various sections in your CV. So basically it scans every single section that you have in your CV. Um, if possible, try to utilize simple title, like um, instead of saying personal skills, um, you instead of saying only skills, um, specialize your titles like personal skills, language skills, uh, use typical expressions like language skills instead of other languages spoken. So try to utilize standardized title in your CV, for example. Use uh, simple characters, don't utilize those handwritten nice characters and use simplified document bullet points. I'm, I'm just telling you this because it is making a lot of conflicts in the applicant tracking system. So the scanning mechanism is giving errors in a lot of cases when you utilize special characters, when you utilize handwritten format. The best is utilizing, for example, simple characters, straight, easily readable characters. The best, unfortunately, is a word format. A lot of people don't like the word format because it can be modified on the other side, on the reader side, but that's the easiest format. If you are worried that your CV will be manipulated or whatever, just convert it into PDF and attach also the PDF version of your CV when you apply. Um, so simple characters, um, bullet points. Don't use the flowers instead of bullet points. Don't use the ticks. Uh, just go with the simple bullet points. That's the easiest to read. If you uh, respect these basic rules, formatting rules, basically, you will have a much simpler, easier way of applying the job because it will make you much easier to complete the data in the applicant tracking system or eventually let your CV scanned by the applicant tracking system. Unfortunately, these systems have a huge disadvantage it is not reading everything. If you have ever worked with a scanner system that is scanning the content and converting it into written characters, then it is reading quite difficultly special characters or special formatting. What you can eventually also do is to make slight tweaks in your job title. If you see a vacancy titled in one way and you know that you have done exactly the same job but with a very different job title, then you just tweak slightly your job title to make sure that it is closer to the vacancy title. It means that you, you must avoid, of course, uh, stating something that you that is not true. So don't lie, of course, but don't focus too much on the job titles. Every company is using very different job titles. It might be very different from one company to the other. Read the job description. Don't focus too much on the job title. And for example, I tell you an example. 
if I'm a project manager, but my company, ideal company that I'm aiming uh, for is looking for a project coordinator, that's a perfect match. You can also change your job title and you can put in a project coordinator that will put you on a higher level in the ranking. So with that, you will have a higher percentage basically in terms of how your CV is scanned. So it's, it's not lying. It's doing the job that the scanning system is doing because you have done exactly the same job, but one company is calling A, the other company is calling B, but it's exactly the same job. So don't focus too much on the job titles. Okay, the next one is about mistakes that we should typically avoid. So acronyms. I hate that. I'm not a native uh, English speaker and I never understand the acronyms. So please write those down in brackets like PM, project manager. If you want to use acronyms, use project manager, put in brackets PM. But um, it is very important that you write down the exact wording of the uh, expression that you use because that way the applicant tracking system will find the exact keywords that the system is looking for. So it will return you the exact keywords that is matching the results. It's completely an artificial intelligence. So one equals one. If, you're, uh, if they are looking for a project manager, you have a project manager title, that's a 100% match. If they are looking for a project manager, you wrote down PM, you can feel the difference. Try to avoid uh, tables, columns, headers, footer, footers uh, in your CV special formatting. Don't use symbols, graphics, horizontal, vertical lines. Don't use that, it's not necessarily. It will just create problems for the artificial intelligence. It will create problems scanning your CV. Um, remember the 75% uh, CV is declined. That's very important. Of course, um, it's good to avoid hyperlinks, except of the LinkedIn profile hyperlink that can be on the top of your CV. Avoid side panels. It's, there are a lot of nice CVs uh, with templates used, but those have nicely formatted side panels that cannot be read. It is mixing in the content, basically the content of the side panels. Uh, try to avoid very dark background colors because it cannot be scanned perfectly. Try to avoid special characters eventually or italic that text. So I know it will, at the end of the day, it will look like a boring formatting, but it has its advantages as well uh, for the recruiters. And, you know, it, it is making the recruiter lives easier, but it is also helping, let's say, the companies to respect the acquired employment opportunity related laws in some countries, especially when they filter high volume applications. It's all about rating and ranking, unfortunately, but if you make your CV in a way uh, that it is easy to read, then you will have a higher success rate in terms of your job application. So there are a couple of websites that can uh, scan your CV against the job description. I really like the job scan one because it's free. I will uh, put you the link actually in one of the slides. This is basically one text box where you can just copy the job description, put it down in a text format, just converting a word into a simple text format, remove special characters, remove spaces. We just need the text and you insert it on one side, job description. On the other side, you insert your CV. Again, text format without special characters, without anything. You do a job scanning. The, the system, this website will tell you basically the percentage of match. It's really cool. I really like that. It's free. You can just play around with that, but it's worth to try because you have to aim for a higher than 90% match. 
try to keep tailoring your CV, go ahead, just modify your CV. Don't ever copy over exactly the same uh, phrases that the job description is telling you. Make sure that the keywords are included in a different context in your CV. Because if you just copy and paste it over, that will uh, make you appear like ridiculous, you know, because the job, the recruiter will then open up your CV 100% match. Wow, this just has been copied and pasted. So that's not good for us. If you have to, if you have some time, um, I, I don't want to go uh, further down in these very technical details, but just go to YouTube and just try to search like keywords like, you know, applicant tracking system, how applicant tracking systems are working. And you will find dozens of materials there really, even YouTube videos where you can just watch the mechanism itself and you can learn a lot of things like that. But very important is to keep it simple. Uh, boring formatting, so no vertical lines, no headers, no footer, no graphics, no symbol, no special characters. It will be much, much easier and it will create you less work. Why? How it looks. So when you see a LinkedIn job application, it will tell you like, I go from the left-hand side, technical writer, look at the easy apply option there. So what will happen if you see a job uh, description, if you see an announcement that you really like, you click on easy apply. What it uh, does, it basically in a very simple format makes you applying to that uh, announcement. It is asking you to attach the CV. Optionally, if it's set up also the cover letter, it scans you everything. It forwards in, into the applicant tracking system of the recruiter company. It's easy apply because uh, it's much quicker for the candidate, but it still goes into an applicant tracking system. Go to the middle of my screen here and look at the content strategies, content writer example. So you see there the apply. So there are different ways in LinkedIn how you can apply. There is the easy apply, there is an apply option. If you go with the apply, it's a little bit longer process. You might be redirected to the company website, but even on the company website, either you complete directly your data within the applicant tracking system. That's a boring process when you take like two hours at least completing all of your data uh, field by field and typing that in. But that way you are basically completing your data directly in the applicant tracking system of the company. Make sure you make a great job on that because that's already uh, the input for the automated ranking. So when you complete that, you will be requested to upload your documentations at the end of the process. So here, go with the CV, go with the cover letter. It's very important. I really like the cover letter and I very, very strongly suggest you to utilize the cover letter. Or third option, direct headhunter approach. What will happen in that case? If somebody is contacting you on LinkedIn because they like your profile, uh, it is a good match in terms of how they search for candidates, they might contact you directly and they will ask you to send the CV, the cover letter, and only in that case, you will have a human being reading your CV first. No other cases. You will always have uh, applicant tracking system, systems, artificial, artificial intelligence. If you are approached directly, that way you will have a human reading your CV, reading your cover letter. But uh, even in those cases, you have to know that when a person is reading your CV, uh, what do you think, what is the average time spent on reading a CV. If I have, if I'm a recruiter, if I have hundreds of applications, uh, what do you think the average time recruiter spends? So I don't run a pool, just think about your, say a minutes or seconds or whatever you think about. So one minute, 
you have an idea. Unfortunately, it's not that good as we think. Um, when you are approached by a headhunter, of course, you might have a longer period, but based on the latest research, it's 20, 30 seconds. So when somebody is reading your CV, the person is spending 20 to 30 seconds in average reading and scanning as a human being, of course, your CV. So we don't speak about system. We uh, now focusing on the recruiter who is reading your CV, 20 to 30 seconds. So what we can do is make most out of these 20 to 30 seconds. Unfortunately, this is a very pessimistic research, but it has been confirmed by Ernst and Young. It has been confirmed by articles and studies like Telegraph and The Guardian. So this is unfortunately not as good as we talked, but it's, it's the truth. So um, what you can do here, uh, make sure that your CV is read by a friend, for example. So ask somebody to read your CV. They have 30 seconds maximum to read your CV and identify the keywords in your CV. So read my CV, maximum two, two pages, the CV, no longer please, maximum two pages. Read my CV and take away the two pages from your friend and tell me what you remember about my profile. Uh, you can do this test with somebody who uh, hopefully don't really know exactly what you do at your job because that will give you a more objective result. But let somebody read your CV and uh, just explain what, what do you remember about my CV in 30 seconds. So take the time, leave them 30 seconds only and what do you remember hopefully it will be a positive thing but it helps you actually to make it more con condensed to make it more straight to the point and make it really good to read and digest but even for human eyes so remember this very short time frame we don't have a lot of time recruiters have hundred cvs to scan every day so it goes very quickly if they are interested they will call you Okay, next one is run a little bit of resource library, what I have just mentioned uh, now during the call, keywords identification. There is a site called TechCrowd. You can utilize that. If you go to the site of JobScan, you will have an incredible amount of resources on JobScan. You can test your resume there. You can make the comparison. You can utilize the uh, templates that are there actually on free applicant tracking compliant resume templates. So go there, check those resources out. It's really good. Um, I really like that side. Next, um, going to the CV structure and going to the details of how to structure your CV. It has to contain all the time contact details on the top, your professional profile summary, core competencies and achievements professional experience, education, certification, trainings, any awards you have received and volunteer work eventually that you have. What is important for you to know is writing always in statements in personal form without utilizing, I have been doing, I did this, I did that in personal format, please. It's a very old fashioned style if you use, I did that, I did that. It has to be very easy to read. It has to look simply and to be, try to be concise and professional. Uh, as I mentioned, the simple characters are really the best characters to utilize like Calibri, Tahoma, Arial. These look boring, but those are the, the easiest characters to scan by an applicant tracking system. If you have nice graphics that might look nice, but those are not read by the applicant tracking system, it might become easily misformatted and it might cause errors with these systems in terms of uh, you know, how it's read. Unless of course you are a designer or you are a creative uh, job related applicant that should look nice. 
Okay, so let's go just very quickly into the details of these sections. Um, contact details on the header, first name, last name, job titles. You can use either one job title. It's uh, typical nowadays using three job titles. Ideally, those are utilizing, it's very typical also LinkedIn to say three similar job titles related to those jobs that you can do. Um, finance manager, finance director, uh, sub-regional finance director, whatever. So similar job titles, but uh, make sure you have at least three because I think that will give you a much better opportunity to find the keywords match in terms of the position title you are aiming for and your job history. Put in your phone number, put in your email address and the LinkedIn profile page. That's all. That's all what I need to contact you. If I want to find you, I will find you. You have a LinkedIn profile page, phone number, email address. That's more than sufficient. Focus on the details. Don't include pictures. Don't include age, marital status, sexual orientation. Don't include any personal details like social ID, uh, home address. And you can eventually include city, like location, room, for example, that's all. Uh, if you don't want to relocate, if you want to relocate, don't include the city because you are flexible in terms of the location. So again, is it statement without avoiding, I did that, I did. Honestly, I don't like to see any hobbies, any personal interest. I don't really care about them when I have to do the screening as a recruiter. Um, nicknames, please avoid in the email addresses. That's also an important point I wanted to mention. Use a professional email format, you know, uh, a sweetheart at hot, uh, hotmail.com. No, not these type of email addresses, please. Use a good format of email address that that looks also professional, so no nicknames in the in the header and in the email address. So next one is about the profile summary. The profile summary is really my favorite topic. I really, really like that. And it's very important. If a recruiter has very limited time, they will surely read your profile summary. It is a short summary basically for your professional experience, key achievements. It has to be quantified. It makes sense if I see numeric results. I increase the regional sales uh, target by 30% respect to the provisions. Things like that, you know, these are all good achievements. Uh, so try to include a couple accomplishment. Uh, it's good to mention years of service because you might have 15 years of experience on the relevant sector that they are uh, recruiting for. And that's good to see immediately if you are really expert on that area. Include specialties and key strains that makes your profile really unique. And go to the job-related hard skills, soft skills. I will mention you some details about this um, in the next couple of slides. Maximum two pages, please. If you are a fresh graduate, one page. If you are a project manager with a lot of projects, it, might, it can be three pages, but remember it's hard to read. It's hard to read, the time is very limited. So this should be basically, uh, a short answer to the question, why should we hire you as a company? Why? Give me a good reason why we should hire you for this position. Don't copy over the same in the LinkedIn profile. Please write something different here. Um, don't just copy over and paste it because recruiters go typically to the LinkedIn profile to check if it's the truth, what you are saying in your CV. They typically do the match. So it's good not to have the same, but do something generic on LinkedIn that makes you find easier. Your CV has to be all the time personalized for the job you are applying for. So LinkedIn more generic, CV is really specific to that job. 
So it's a huge work. I know applying for a job, it's a huge work, but your CV has to be tailored every time for the related job. A couple of examples for you, just to have an idea how it looks, profile summary examples. This one I found a little bit long actually, but I like that it was using targets, it was using achievements, it was including skills. I thought it's a good example just to show you very quickly. The other one, two, two other one, like an IT project manager that I found a couple of public examples. So I don't, uh, I will not hurt any copyrights by showing you these details. It's not a, a person's profile summary. It's just a couple of examples that you can find easily when you Google it basically and you try to find a good profile summary example. And another one that actually a little bit um, long but it's also a very good summary so maybe make it like two three lines less in your profile summary i really like it approximately five six lines maximum that's the idea if you want to see some more ideas go to the resume lab.com website you insert your job title and you will find a lot of suggestion for specific content regarding the related job so resumelab.com, that's also a good resource actually. Um, CV structure, going down to the next section, core competencies and achievements. So this is a little bit more tricky. This is where typically people get a little bit confused. So this should contain key job related hard skills and soft skills that contributed to the success. So remember the fact that skills are always transferable from one job to another and um, it will not depend from the company it will not depend from the sector it will be just all about you it's good to include in the core competencies and the achievement section a, a good mixture of skills soft skills and hard skills a short list please so what are the soft skills personal qualities, those attributes or characteristics that you have as a person. For example, leadership skill, interpersonal skills, professional attitude, um, from work ethic, and things like that. So uh, for skills that uh, is hard to quantify, but still really relevant for the job. What are the hard skills? Hard skills are more specific skills basically that are quantifiable and more teachable skills. So these are typically that uh, enable you to do a job with a good standard. So a typical example might be like coding, driving a car, uh, knowing uh, mathematical calculations or things like that. So your future role may be very similar to your current profession and those hard skills will help you basically. So again, remember all skills are transferable. We don't forget speaking English if we do it every day. So included it in the technical skills section giving you a very uh, good fact I, I found about soft skills. I put you down a couple of examples and the red highlights on these tables, so collaboration, creativity, emotional in intelligence, adaptability, persuasion are the top soft skills that companies are most uh, researching in 2020 in LinkedIn. So basically, when a company, a recruiter, is searching for soft skills, in 2020, these were those top soft skills that the companies need most in this year. These are the statistics. Go to LinkedIn, check it out. They have a good section about data. It's, it's worth to read it because you can learn a lot about that. So top five skills. It's good to have it in your CV actually if you feel up to it and if you have those. Next slide is about hard skills. The same, the top five 
hard skills. Now, it's a little bit more tricky because if you ask me about UX design, I will not be able to tell you what it is. But if you have these hard skills, it's important to know for you that these are those hard skills that were the most researched in 2020 based on LinkedIn research. If you, there is a, a good to basically, if you don't have these hard skills, uh, but you want to learn this, basically you are interested in doing this, it's good to do like courses, free courses, or very cheap courses like Udema, Coursera, Google, couple of free uh, courses uh, that are organized by international platform. Try to look for that, especially analytical reasoning, um, data analytics, it's quite easy to find actually. And data, everybody who is working with data, I think is really in a good position on the job market. So next section, professional experience. Headline, job title, company name, period, nothing else. One line for the headline. It has to be always the most recent that comes first. Reverse con chronological order. Then focus on the details after that two, three um, lines about the work experience, what you have done, a bit of description, what you have done in the job. It's important that always the most recent job has to contain more details because those are the relevant ones. So it has to be a little bit longer, the recent one, respect to the others. Describe your key responsibilities, achievements, and promote yourself your competencies, successful project. Don't be shy, don't be shy, show your results. Nothing confidential, of course. Um, go with measurable goals because those are really good. And remember the ABC rule, achievement, behavior, context. For work history, those will work really nicely. So describe the achievement, the behavior, the context. It will always help you to make it really good sounding, ABC rules. So it will be really a rounded description if you focus on that. Education, yes, sure, it's good, go with that. University degree, um, everything you can include, master's degree, Please don't include elementary school or studies that might be not relevant for the job you apply for. If I did a cake design session or course, uh, but I apply for a project manager role, I don't want to see cake design uh, certifications here or whatever other that is not relevant. It's just make you completely not relevant. So it's not necessary. Don't take the space. Uh, the two pages are very tight. Don't take the space with not relevant details. Certification, yes, include those. Trainings include those. Awards volunteer work, it's really good. It gives you an idea of volunteer work, especially about your passions. I wanted to tell you another thing I forget previously. If you had jobs that you did like university years, very young age, you were a waitress, you were a babysitter, we don't need that. We don't need that in your CV. If you are now professional with a university degrees, with studies, with 10, 15 years work experience, focus on that. I don't need to know that you were doing babysitting in Germany during your university. I don't care about that. Okay, let's go to the next one. That's sufficient actually for the CV. I think we described everything that you need. Cover letter, I think it's really, really good. This will give a little bit of more personal flavor for the recruiters, but you have to raise the attention here to your CV. So this is what they typically read first, and this will have to point the attention towards the CV. So utilize this as an opportunity to use as a business card. So be short, uh, concise, easy to read, two, three paragraphs maximum. 
again, go back to the question, why should you hire me? Why am I the perfect candidate for you? Express your interest in the position, demonstrate that you know what the company is doing, you know that your skills are related to that particular job offer, and you will be the perfect fit for the company. You are the perfect candidate for the role. Every time you apply, you have to tailor that. You have to modify this. Cover letter cannot be standard. It has to be personalized. It has to be individualized. It has to be written to each individual job application. Again, it's a huge work, I know, but this will help you. There are some companies who don't require uh, cover letters like Amazon, Microsoft, or Google, because they have such a mass application that they they don't have physically the time, neither the recruiters nor the machines, they don't read that. In that case, I think you will see if there is an opportunity to upload it, use that opportunity. It gives you one extra point, actually, respect to the other candidates who are too lazy to attach and create this. It's a good point to, to use. So let's go very quickly to the LinkedIn profile because this is something you will hear much more about uh, in the third session that we are organizing basically as part of the board program. LinkedIn is basically nowadays becoming your business card. So if I don't want to give my business card that is not really utilized any longer to somebody who I know in a professional environment, I tell them, okay, tell me your name, I will send you a connection on LinkedIn. That's a good, easy way, it's really used. Consider that 90% of the recruiters are actively searching on LinkedIn. It has an enormous number of database of members. It is now, I think, the latest statistics on LinkedIn are showing 675 million members. That means basically an enormous amount of people to search. And consider also that based on the job hunt statistics, LinkedIn's primary revenue is LinkedIn recruiter. It's a section within LinkedIn. So this is their main uh, source of income basically for LinkedIn. LinkedIn recruiter, the application that recruiters are using. So it's not that bad for a company that has been founded 17 years ago actually. And it is using a mechanism that is called LinkedIn Profile CEO, so search engine optimization. What we need to know a little bit better, search engine optimization. This is something basically that is ranking your CV. So with that, you can optimize the research. Before you do that, before we go into the details, remember if you seek for a job, privacy settings, job seeker preferences, job seeking preferences, open to new opportunities, set it up update your career interest page and use customized messages when you are requesting a connection from a recruiter. Uh, try to connect with as much as recruiter possible. And when you send a request to connect with that person, you will have the opportunity popping up in a small window to include customized messages, 300 characters. Use that, describe that you are looking for a new job with this or that profile and I'm happy for you. Thank you for connecting. Thank you for thinking about me when you see a similar job that might fit my profile. Good, so use these settings. Your LinkedIn profile, very quickly, go to optimize it. So let's try to optimize as much as possible. All star status means that all fields are completed in LinkedIn. You have skills and endorsements that is really shining, good. You have at least three endorsements. Ask your colleagues, ask your previous colleagues, write me a couple of nice statements, how great I am. Have your headlines sorted out. So again, the three job titles are working very nicely. It's very typical nowadays. A lot of people are using that. I have seen almost like 80, 90% of the cases. Experience section completed, at least with three jobs and 
field in approximately for at least 10, 15 years if you have that much experience, of course. Um, profile summary has to be really nice, but not the same as in the CV and turn on the profile visibility to recruiters as we mentioned before. Engage with people, uh, try to make likes, comments, shares. If you do this, the algorithm will reward you. You nurture an automated algorithm, artificial intelligence again in the system that will rank you as a actively engaged person on LinkedIn. That means your profile will pop up in more researches. That means more visibility for you and for your professional profiles. Make sure you list your key competencies, technologies, methodologies, you know, that makes you really particular eventually. Clear, professional looking photo, please. Certification, diplomas, awards, anything that you can complete, complete here. This is a professional platform. You make most out of it. Why it's important? Engagement is really important on LinkedIn. This is again nurturing the algorithm. You have more hits for your profile searches if you are a full star profile, so everything is completed. It gives you a higher ranking in terms of your uh, engagement status in LinkedIn. That is giving you more profile views. Remember, it's not necessarily the amount of contacts that count, but also the frequency, how you engage with LinkedIn. So the frequency of the LinkedIn usage is also important. The quality and the added value of your contribution. Please don't do like, nice tip, thank you. That has no added value, no quality contribution when you comment something. Try to comment as much as possible, like at least three, five, ten comments if you want to be really active. But make sure that those comments are saying something. Don't use generic buzzwords. Don't use like thanks, whatever, because it's not adding value. It's not adding quality. It's it's not really a good good addition. Um, don't think that social networking is only for extroverts because it's actually even more particular for people who are introverts because they prefer more writing respect to speaking basically. So it's, a, it's an interesting thing. So if you feel that you are not that extrovert type, that's fine. Just go ahead, uh, write things, comment things. It will still work out nicely for you. Connect with industry professionals because they will help to increase your network. So it, it is basically the future. It's uh, you know future of the practice in terms of how you are seeking job. It is an increasing need for people. So it's a good platform to utilize. Um, if possible, avoid applying like mobile application because when you attach your CV, when you attach your um, cover, you may have a little bit more limited functionalities on the mobile applications respect to the computer. So um, I'm conscious about the time and just trying to wrap up quickly. Online networking can introduce you a lot of in-person networking events like ours, for example, tonight. So use online networking tools. Even Facebook is offering nowadays quite good quality meetings and networking events, but more I prefer honestly more LinkedIn for this purpose. But try to, to sign up yourself to events, conferences. It's really good on creating a bigger network for you. So if you have lost your job, uh, don't be afraid of showcasing your achievement, even that way on LinkedIn, even in your CV actually, but also on LinkedIn. Promote your activities, promote your professional experience. Be careful, of course, showcasing non-confidential achievements because that might create you problems. But write articles, for example, on LinkedIn, write meaningful uh, uh, comments, try to be as much as uh, positive as much as possible. So don't get down, 
heavily with comments like, you know, negative comments, try to be uh, positive and constructive when you comment something. Consider that there is a huge, huge, huge advantage for those who are currently unemployed. This is the fact that you are able to start immediately a new job. So if you are hired this week uh, by the recruiter, you can start immediately after one week, for example, just tell you an example. This is an enormous advantage for companies that are hiring. So it's fine if you are open for new opportunities, you can put the nice sign on, on LinkedIn all around your pictures, but it, it's, it's also an advantage because you will be able to have a much shorter notification in terms of when you can uh, start. And another note, if you are negotiating for an exiting package, for example, so if you uh, are in a position to lose your job, uh, in the near future, then try to negotiate your package in a way that it includes like a career transitioning service. Those used to be very good because they make you work a lot with your profiles, with your CVs. They have a database in terms of recruiters who are actively hiring. You have to connect with those recruiters on LinkedIn. Uh, so these career transition services used to be quite good nowadays. So if you can negotiate those, negotiate it because it will pay it up for you, but that has to be paid by the company that is reducing the headcount. So don't pay it for yourself if you are positioned to let the company pay for that. It used to be very good. So now with that, I'm starting to wrap up. I'm conscious about the time. I'm, I'm running a little bit over. Hope you are able to make a further five minutes, basically. What will come next as part of our uh, BOLD program? This was the first session about the professional profile, CV, cover letter, LinkedIn profile page. Next session will be on the 29th October. I will involve a fantastic lady called Florence, who is my colleague and an executive recruiter. She will um, be very open to questions. She is a, a recruiter with a lot of years of experience. She's doing a lot of uh, online face-to-face -face interviewing uh, and she will tell you a little bit more tips and tricks about how the job interview is working. And our third one uh, will be on the 3rd December, and it will be about LinkedIn and how to boost your online presence with LinkedIn. And Melanie L. Denny, who is a career empowerment coach and the LinkedIn strategist, personal branding expert, will be involved. She's really a great superstar on her area. So she will tell us a little bit more about how to make sure that you are able to make most out of your LinkedIn profile. And probably you could see that as part of the board, we have also launched on our uh, PVA page a couple of events like the Aspire reInvent virtual conference where we have received five uh, scholarships for free. And we also uh, promote activities like, for example, the future of leadership when women lead uh, activity of the United Nations. So, I will keep trying to, to post these nice, good, helpful events on the uh, LinkedIn page group link on the PBA, PWA, so Professional Women's Association. Search for it on LinkedIn. It's a good place to be. And with that, I also wanted to let you know that unfortunately the next two sessions will be for members only of PBA. So the executive recruiter and the LinkedIn profile uh, builder session will be for members only. But if you want to become a member of PVA, I will handle over now very quickly to uh, Mirela who will tell you a bit uh, about how it's working to become a PWA member. Um, hi everyone, can you hear me well? Yes, we do. So I, I don't want to steal more than 30 seconds um, of the time because I've seen running a lot of interesting questions. Um, just 
two messages. Uh, the, the renewal of the membership is already open for our existing uh, uh, members and any new uh, guests here today that would like to know more about our uh, association, just use the membership director at pwarome.org to write me. I will tell you more. Uh, about our programs, you had a taste of what we do, and uh, and give you all the all the rest of the deta details. Okay, I pass it back to you. You are on mute. Oops, sorry, thank you, thank okay. you. <laughs> Here I am, Mirella. thank you very much. A special thanks to you and to Christiana who helped me with this session tonight and who I, I stressed, I think, in an incredible way to make sure everything is, for, is working nicely. So with that, I'm just opening very quickly for the questions. Are, are you with us, Christiana? Are you okay to read some questions? Absolutely. Thank okay. you. We received a lot of questions uh, and actually, I mean, I tried to cluster in three big channels. I mean, definitely the applicant tracking system uh, uh, raised uh, questions or curiosity. So um, our members and guests were, were, were wondering uh, if uh, um, applicant tracking systems uh, are set in more languages. Uh, for instance, uh, if I'm applying for a position in an international company with offices in Italy and I upload a curriculum in English rather than Italian, would the system read it? Follow the language of the job description. It's a good tip. So if the job description in Britain in English, send your CV in English and attach the Italian one. But the primary language has to be the language of the job description that you see either on LinkedIn or in the uh, website of the company that is hiring. And Chris, we were curious to know, I mean, what is the uh, applicant tracking system failure rate? Meaning, uh, is the system eliminating uh, a suitable candidate? Uh, I mean, we all remember the 75 percentage uh, that you showed us before, but uh, is there any, any research about uh, failure of uh, the system? Well, it's, it's funny because, you know, probably it will be very difficult to read about failure rate because this is a, a system that costs millions for the companies. So probably they don't really publish the failure rate. The failure rate is up to the recruiter as well, unfortunately. So there is a human factor in it. If I'm a recruiter and I see 100 CVs and I can and read only the top 10, then my failure rate is, is of course, the uh, remaining 90 CVs that might be excellent candidates. So we cannot expect basically um, uh, one person or a recruiter just read uh, all applications, especially because consider nowadays we have thousands of applications for a vacancy. So it's not that simply, unfortunately, to define a failure rate. Mm -hmm. And Chris, you just mentioned uh, that these are very, very expensive systems. Uh, so we have a comment about, I mean, someone was wondering, uh, those systems are, lar are used by larger companies. Uh, um, what about um, small companies uh, and how, I mean, if there is any interconnection or something similar for smaller company, given that, for example, in Rome, we have few of those international, multinational companies. Uh, most of the companies are small and medium sized. It depends. If you see a job description and the job announcement, I think more and more companies are now hiring through LinkedIn. So if you go there and you see that your application is redirected, to uh, an applicant tracking system or to another link, then you will see that they are utilizing this system. It's not necessarily a well-known system, but I would recommend you to Google it, the name of the link where you are redirected. So like um, www.something.com, uh, www Google that name and you will know if it's an applicant tracking system or not. I think it's quite easy to identify it and try to do that if possible. If it's a small company, of course, they, if it's a 10, uh, 30 employees company, they will read the CVs. So you can expect 
to have a human being on the other side, of course, and read your CV. So there you can utilize nice templates, design, um, but don't be longer than uh, two pages, even in those cases. I, I, I wouldn't really spend more time on a CV than two uh, pages to read through. Okay, and actually this is a perfect segue uh, on the other questions uh, linked to LinkedIn. Um, you mentioned earlier about some tweaks uh, um, with regards to the job description, job titles. Uh, the question is, uh, how